In this website training video, we're going to cover how to install WordPress for the very first time on your hosting account. We're starting here inside of the hosting control panel for our website. This particular host uses a control panel that's called cPanel, which is a pretty standard control panel that you'll see with a lot of web hosts. However, you may be using a different provider such as GoDaddy or Network Solutions that has their own control panel. Different hosts do have different control panels they use, so you might not see this exact setup. However, a lot of the steps are very similar in that most hosting providers these days do provide some kind of software installer that allows you to quickly and easily install WordPress on your hosting account. So from here within our control panel, which we've logged into using the credentials that were provided by our host, all we need to do is scroll down to the section here that's called Software and Services. And this is where the installers are located. There are three main installers that this program provides. The first is called Installatron. The second is called Fantastico Deluxe. And the third is called Softaculous. As I said, different hosts may use different installer programs, but it's likely that they'll include one of these or a program of a different name that allows you to install WordPress, and each of them has a pretty simple to follow step-by-step -step process. For this video, we're going to use the Softaculous installer, as this is the one that I prefer to use, although the other two work just fine. This is one I just happen to like and feel most comfortable with. So I'm going to click on the icon to launch the Softaculous program. And the first thing it does is take you here to the main Softaculous page. And you can see here in the left hand side, there are several different things that you can use this installer to install. So it isn't just WordPress or even just websites in general, but several different tools are available here. However, we're going to install WordPress and we would find that under blogs, although we are actually going to use WordPress to create a full website and we don't need to be limited by the blog format, it is located under the blog section of most of these installer programs. So once we've clicked that tab, we're just going to go ahead and select WordPress from the options below. And that takes us to the WordPress overview page. We can skip this one pretty quickly. It is nice to note that this particular installer program is using version 3.2.1 of WordPress and at the time that this video is recorded that is the current version of WordPress. Most of these installers will install the current version for you automatically but it is a good idea to check just to be sure. From here all we need to do is locate the install tab and click on it to launch the installer and this is gonna lead us through a few simple steps that we are going to use to just kind of create our account for the very first time. And the first thing that we're going to do is choose our protocol, which in this case is HTTP. We do have several other options as well, uh, but for most WordPress sites, this is the appropriate choice, unless you're running an online store of some kind and you need to use a secure HTTP protocol. Also, we're going to choose our domain, and because we are actually installing this site for the domain dreaminretro.com, which is the domain name for our sample website, we can actually leave this as it is. The next step, and this is fairly important, is that most installers are going to try and install your WordPress software in a directory, or in a folder, if you prefer. And in this case, this is not what we want, because we would prefer that the actual website be installed at the root level or the top level of our host so that someone can just go to the site by typing dreaminretro.com and not have to type in dreaminretro.com slash WP in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that and leave it blank. This is going to install the WordPress on the root level of our host. It's important to note that if you already have WordPress installed at the root level, this is going to overwrite any previous version of WordPress you have. So be sure that you're doing this for the first time on an account that doesn't already have WordPress on it. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at the database name. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and use the default just because there's no real reason to change this. 
Down below that we have database settings and this is a very important one. We have what's called table prefix here and you can see that the table prefix currently is WP underscore. This is actually a default for a lot of installers and it's a pretty good idea to change this for no other reason than because WP underscore is so commonly used that it's one of the first things that hackers will look for when trying to hack your site. So simply changing your table prefix is a really quick and easy way to help secure your site. In this case we don't need to be too fancy so we're just going to choose DR, short for Dream and Retro. But you can choose any letter or series of letters that you want and it doesn't have to be two letters, you can choose more than two letters if you prefer. We're just going to keep it at two letters just to make things simple. Moving down a little further we see that we have a few site settings that we need to address. The first is our site name and that is the name that's going to display in our actual header for the website. So we're going to go ahead and call that Dream and Retro. And also we have an area here called Site Description. And you can think of this as sort of the tagline for your site. Or if you happen to have a business and you use a tagline for your business, this is probably a good place to enter that tagline as well. In this case, the tagline for our website is a celebration of old school photography and so that's what we're going to enter for our site description and we'll be able to see where that's located once the site itself is actually installed. The next thing we need to do is we need to enter our admin account information. This is the information that you will use to log into WordPress in the dashboard and actually control the settings of your site itself. Because you'll be the administrator of the site, you have an administrator username and by default it's typically called admin. Again, this is something that's commonly used as a vector for attack by hackers who want to gain access to your site. So it's a good idea to not have an account named admin as that's the first thing they're going to try and use to break into a site. So we're going to go ahead and give this another name. So for this admin account we're going to choose the name Retro Dreams and please note that if you use uppercase letters such as we have here that you will have to use uppercase when you log in as well because the admin username is case sensitive. Next thing we need to do is enter an administrator password. Obviously it's filled out for us but this isn't a terribly strong password so we need to choose one that is more to our liking. In this case we've chosen a password which is pretty difficult to hack because it uses a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and punctuation marks. Definitely be sure that once you've entered this password that you copy it and paste it to a safe place. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to enter our email address. The last thing we need to do is we need to select the language that our site is going to be in. And in this case it's already in English and since we are in the United States that's what we're going to leave it set to. So all we need to do is click on install. However, if you'd like to, you can have the installation details emailed to you. This is a great way to save your settings in a safe place so that you don't have to worry about writing them all down later. So again, we're going to use the same email address. We're going to have this installation emailed to us. It's going to send us a document that's going to have all of our settings, including our password and everything else we need. So if we ever lose track of these settings, we can always get back to them. Once we've done that, all we need to do is click on the Install button to install WordPress. It doesn't take very long, and as we can see, the software, WordPress in this case, has been successfully installed. And you can see that we can actually go to the URL of the site itself. And there's our base WordPress installation for Dream and Retro, a celebration of old school photography. If we scroll around a little bit, we see that there really isn't much here right now. We do have a home, which is our blog, and a sample page, which if we take a look at it, just has a little bit of content in it, but not much else. Another thing to note is that you are given a administrative URL. This is the login for the dashboard of the site, and so all we need to do is click on the link here. Doing so will take us to a login page where we could simply log in and have full access to the dashboard of our site.